Aim a Little Higher podcast, episode two. There was, there was always this little burning desire of, I don't know what it was, but I just want to be, I remember going to cinema, I just want to be in that, you know, on that screen. I, wanna, you know, I, don't, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I just want to do it. That's it. You are locked into Aim a Little Higher podcast, where we interview inspirational individuals every Monday and Wednesday and answer your questions every Saturday to help turn your potential into results. Results. I know you're going to dig this. Introducing your host, he was an Olympic torchbearer, Pete Jones' National Entrepreneur of the Year and motivational speaker, Kamal Hyman. Welcome to the Aerial Hire Podcast. It's your boy Kamal Hyman here, and it's my absolute pleasure to introduce today's guest. He's one of the stars and co-writers of the comedy trio Man Them on the Wall. He had a lead role in Wizard vs. Aliens and has had guest leads in Silent Witness, Excluded, and was lead in the feature film Beat Girl. It is my pleasure to introduce writer and actor Percy Ascot. Percy, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? <laughs> come on, come on. Thank you, man. My pleasure, my bro. Thank you for, for having me. Hey, it's awesome to have you here. And I mean, we met, what, wow, a couple of years ago now. Yeah, 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 couple yeah. yeah. Ago, a couple, right? couple of years, man. At an event where I was hosting, you guys, you guys shut it down, basically, man. <laughs> the crowd were going crazy. You had the, the you, skanking man. out. It was awesome, man. Absolutely awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. So, yeah, it would just be awesome for our listeners to kind of find out a bit more about you, a bit more about how it all started. And, you know, the Aim Little Higher movement is all about setting solid foundations. You know, we say don't chase your dreams, build them. So yeah. we just want to find out a bit about your foundation. Like, let's start right at the beginning. What were you like as, as a young child? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, I'm sure uh, a lot of people who have, I don't know, who might have been on a journey like mine or share the same type of passion, it sometimes means as, as kids we were always a little bit different. Yeah. And I say different in a in a beautiful meaning because it's like we was always, I don't know, like you just didn't quite fit in with what was normal. But mm -hmm. I guess it's always good. But to kind of answer your question, yeah, I was a I was a very active child um I can just have flashbacks of me just running around um, <laughs> my parents chasing me you know when you're into the supermarkets and you know you, my mum that's my mum chasing me I was always okay. that kid <laughs> causing trouble was a nuisance um so a little bit rebellious but I had a weird way of of understanding things or sometimes processing processing things so for example if I was in school and we're doing English and we, it was about I don't know creating a story and this is like year four but I just remember myself being so imaginative with these stories that I couldn't the teacher couldn't understand what I was writing neither wow. but I could I could comprehend it but it, I remember it was very very sort of vivid and out there do you know what I mean in terms of you know the things I was kind of creating but I don't know I just saw the world differently through a lot of people's eyes um so yeah man I, I knew from a, a very early age I had something special but I just didn't know what it was I just knew I think from watching movies and stuff you kind of see that character in the film and they they have that specialness or whatever it is yeah. and I kind of linked yeah. it to that so I was like okay cool there is something here in it but I guess as I got older, I realised what it was and, you know what I mean, it's where I am today. And do you know what's beautiful about that? That you kept hold of that. Thank you. Because, my gosh, I, I you know, I work in schools and yeah. I go into schools and I work at a primary school kids. What do you want to be? I want to be an astronaut. I want to be an actor. Yeah. Get yeah. into secondary school. What do you want to be? Ah, uh, do you know what? I don't even know. Get a bit yeah. older. What do you want to be? I just, I just need a job, man. I just need... And it's like... Where did that no, passion go? What happened? Exactly. Because we, I mean, even my team and stuff, we always say about keeping that inner, that inner child alive because I guess that's what helps your creativity. Even when I ask sometimes, like, like myself, like my, my siblings and stuff, and as they get older, and I, I kind of saw it too in myself, but luckily I had mentors and teachers to kind of, you know, carry on uh, uh, opening me up to, to explore what else there could be. But I remember myself, you know, also saying... Ah, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I was yeah. very sort of, you know, bland or sometimes vague. But then, you know, as I said, luckily, you know what I mean? I've got to just awaken what was inside that little voice inside of me that said, no, you want to, you know, go and do an act, be an actor and a writer and stuff, you know? Awesome. And I think what's really key there for the audience is you surrounded yourself with the right people. Exactly. You didn't say, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, it's cool. Come be average. Come be average. They said, nah, go and, go and fly because there's something to you. We see it and we're yeah. not going to let you settle. 
yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's beautiful man thank you man and a lot thank of people you. listening they'll they'll obviously see your story and you know be really inspired by you and going back to where they're at now they're kind of wondering what route do i take you know education wise should i go and do an apprenticeship should i go to college should i go to university what education route did you take um what education route i took i took i actually ended up i've gone to about um two primary schools and I went to about three different secondary schools just because I was moving house at the time. Okay. So in my life, I always said to a lot of people when I explain my story that I had the great opportunity of experiencing life of both sides of the fence. Now to break that down, I, I grew up in South East London and um, I grew up with um, my three other cousins and my mum and my auntie and was in a two bedroom flat. So six of us in this two bedroom flat, okay. and then we went to, and then I moved. I went, I went, and, and now I live in Surrey. So I live in Surrey with my mum, my stepdad, and it's a three bedroom house with my two other siblings, my little sisters. So I got to see basically in, in terms of schooling and environmental stuff of just how people communicate and how people, I guess, respond to different things from the, the two separate environments. And so it affected me on my schooling journey as well, because when I was in school, um, I went to just a normal state school in, in, in South East London. And then when I went to my school in Surrey, it, they had a different um, effect on me in terms of just like what I hated in my first school, I loved in my second. It was very okay. weird. And it was just due to my teacher, because in my first school, you know, I was kind of picked on a little bit for, for my passion of acting. Yeah. I knew I had this, this little knack for it due to, in primary school, I was doing, you know, I was Mowgli and Jungle Book and all this kind of stuff. Okay. But it wasn't deemed as cool when I went to my first school. So then when I went to my second school, I, 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 there I was embraced and I started flourishing and my wow. passion grew. And I got to this point when I was 14 years old, uh, my dad gave me this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh-huh. And Classic. he, exactly, <laughs> he said to me, he'd always drum it in. My dad's an entrepreneur and I, I love my dad because he's very sort of, um, he's not, he's a optimistic. So he told me, okay, you know, it's good for you, son, to know what you want to do now at the age of 14, you know, what you want to be because it just means you'll get a head start when you're older. That's it. I actually said to him I want to be an actor and I wasn't met with a great sort of encouragement from him in the, in the, in the sort of the immediate get-go. But he still said, okay, cool, you know, if you want to pursue that, then, you know, take it forward. And again, like the whole book of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I had a stepdad and my dad, and they were both two different men as well. So I had a very realistic stepdad and a very very optimistic dad. So the both of them, again, because I came from different environments from South East London to Surrey and also my dad's being the, the, the two separate men, I just had this great perspective of life from both ends and when it did come to schooling um, I, I, I took both of their I guess great characteristics and applied it to my own and I guess I just said you know at 14 I want to be an actor I'm going to do it I took the sort of realistic uh, perspectives from my sat down and I, I looked at the schooling and I got very very serious about it and knuckled down and I took the optimistic side of my dad and I had that belief and hope that I'm going to, you know, get to the next school, which was the Brit school. Nice. And that's, I guess, famous for its performing arts sector and, you know, all the alumni that have been there before. Yeah, for But, um, yeah, I, I guess I, a, I think I've answered your question or I might have gone in a loophole here, but... <laughs> no, definitely. So it sounds like primary, secondary and then into the specialist Brit school. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And I think that's so key for creators, what you said there. Creators do get pushed to the side in certain schools because what's cool? Football. Yes. You know, you're on a football team, you're on a basketball team, you're on a rugby team. That's that's what's cool. And it took a while for, you know, the creators to come through. I remember when I first started street dancing. Yeah. It was because I wasn't great at football, man. I had to find my thing. I was like, I'm not great at football. Rugby scares the hell out of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me but, try and start dancing. Because everyone... Okay, I see. Because even, even for myself, football was my passion. Like, okay. I love football more than I did even what I do now. But for me, it just came to a place where, I guess, physically, I wasn't like developing like the, all the other kids. I was still quite small. And so it just got a little bit more harder and difficult. But there was, there was always this little burning desire of... I don't know what it was, but I just want to be... I remember going to cinema. I just want to be, in, you know, on yeah. that screen. I want to, you know, I don't, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I just want to do it. That's it. Big, you know, big. No plan B. No backup. This, this is it. And and that plan B, that's that's 
because even when I got to the British school, just as you know, for the listeners out there, you know, this is a big thing. I did all the steps necessary to get to the right school, you know what I mean, to be in the right environment. But still, still, even when I was at the British school, it wasn't this this place of where, you know, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of like uh, talented kids and, you know, they were they were extraordinary, but a lot of them didn't have, say, the hard work or sometimes even the vision. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes the kids just, that's it. They, they knew to get to British school, but they didn't see what was life like outside even education as a whole, you know what I mean? And it's like, what is the real world like? And I remember Javan Wade right now, he plays failure in Man on the Wall, but I went to school with him. We met each other at 16. And when, as we became friends, because we wasn't, we didn't hit it off immediately just because we was each other's rivals in class in terms of um, <laughs> auditioning for roles and whatnot. But we both got the leads in Shakespeare and as we was rehearsing together, we kind of realised we both had a lot in common. But he, I remember I asked him, because I remember my dad, again, my optimistic dad, he said to me that, OK, son, I know you're in a great school and stuff. Might need a plan B. And I took that on. I was like, OK, cool. You know, I, I trust you and I can understand that. So, yeah, I'm going to think about my plan B too. But with Javan, when I, when I asked him about his plan B, he said to me he doesn't have one. I was confused. I was like, what? Yeah. And he said to me, well, you can't have a plan B because plan B will only distract you from plan A. And I real, I, it clicked, it hit me so hard. And he said to me, watch this video. And it was a Will Smith, Will Smith yeah. motivational video. And that's where the, everything, everything changed for me, everything. Because there I was listening to these words of Will Smith, you know, an icon of mine. But like what he was saying, I'd never received this information before, okay. you know, his message and stuff of, of how... You know, I guess for him, how the universe works and, you know, how, you know, if he says something, it, it's going to happen. And that yeah. just that rule, the burning belief, you know, and, and I guess that then took me to a whole new level, you know, even being in the whole Brit school, you know, foundation. But, you know, there's something that they can't teach you. And it's that, you know, it's that that key thing about that, that you just got to believe in yourself so, so, so much. Yeah. So Powerful yeah, stuff. Stuff, man. <laughs> so you found the passion, took the route with the, the specialist route, and yeah, yeah worked hard, worked yeah. hard, it worked hard, awesome, worked hard. And while we're on the subject of work, what was your first job? Because I mean, you're doing what you want to do now, but what yes. was what was that first job? I think back to my first role, and I got this role at the age of um, 17 years old, and I was still at the Brook School at this point as well. So what happened was was coming to the end of our first year, and um, this casting director came in for some kids to be in this classroom for this show called Excluded. And, and um, it was a BBC show and it was very exciting, but she, you know, only can only pick a few people. And what it was, she went to the Brit school because, you know, just there might be a few kids there, but what would happen, she would audition us and then lucky enough, we'll get selected for the open auditions where we went to audition at BBC Centre itself. So I remember, you know, I did the audition for her and... I don't know, when, when I'm performing, I, I have this thing where you can kind of feed energy off the person you're performing for and you can, you can as soon as that you've got the crowd in your, the palm of your hands, you know, that thing that I'm sure a lot of listeners, your performers understand, you know, when you're, even if you're dancing, you're hitting every beat or, you know, you're acting and you can just know that every, you know, uh, uh, word you're saying, people are just listening, you know, like yeah. a pin drop. Um, so, yeah, I did this audition and I got through to the next stage. And I remember at the open auditions, I, I did, you know, the open auditions. We each had to come in a circle and improvise. And I remember, man, I remember just having everyone just really tuned into what I was doing, you right. know. And when I just knew, like, I this 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 gut feeling. And, and the biggest part of my success and stuff is always listening to your gut. And I just remember even that building thinking, yeah, I think, I, I think I've done it. I think I've done really well. I remember getting the call and at this time I didn't have no agent so I had the casting director who who you know casted me for the for the for the project she actually had to negotiate my you know the whole monies and stuff this that the other but I was one of the first kind of kids from Brit school in my class to get like an outside job wow you know so it was quite nice I got it in the summer too so we just finished school I went out to Bristol um I did about four weeks filming and again, it was a great experience because it was my first time just being away from home. Also, just on a set for the first time. I remember, you know, with, with this crew, cameras, everything, lighting. It was literally like, wow, like I've got to 
this part. I've, I've, I've got, this is my dream. I'm, I'm here. You know what I mean? Wow. Just all of this hard work, all of these years of just believing in myself and, you know, the struggles and stuff. I'm, I'm, I've, I've kind of got to that place. Um, and yeah, it was just a, a phenomenal experience that just, I guess, created a hunger in me now today that, you know, I, it's just, um, after that little taste, you know, you you develop the, the hunger for it and, you know, you want it again and again. So Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, man. Uh, do you have any significant or surprising achievements that you think have contributed to your success? Um, it's sort of uh, uh, um, surprising moments of like... Yeah, something, yeah. something that yeah. might seem random at the time, but actually has helped you out in the long term. Yeah. Um, mandem on the wall. Okay. Mandem on the wall. Mandem on the wall. The reason why I say that is because... So a lot of people who, who, who kind of might, might not know what Man on the Wall is and stuff, it's an online comedy series about three guys who sit on this wall. And again, me and Javan, um, we was in school together and was coming up to like the end of Brit school. And we was just thinking about, okay, cool, what do we want to do after Brit? And the choices were either go to drama school or university. We, we was just thinking to ourselves and the feeling wasn't right. We were just, you know, the gut instinct wasn't thinking, oh, I need to go to university or drama school. Yeah. Because one, as an actor, even if I get a qualification, it doesn't mean that, hey, I get a job at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's about experience. You know, you can still go to drum school to hone in your, on your craft, which I believe you should be a master of. But at the same time, I, I knew that getting my own experience out there is also beneficial. So at the end of Brit, me and Javan both got to the same agency. And um, whilst we was at this agency, we was getting auditions and we were just thinking to ourselves, you know, we, we need to create our own opportunities. This yeah. is waiting for a phone call at the end of the day. It can't work for us, basically. So, you know, out of that desire to create our own opportunities, we tried to hook up with the guys from us. School, uh, our classmates to do a, a a YouTube series, and you know it was called Scrapes, and you know it was just you know we had a you know this team, and we had writers, this that the other, blah blah blah. But me and Jay were the only ones dedicated enough to stay with the project, and yeah. everyone else kind of you know dropped off. But you know on the other end, there was a man called D Cartier who's younger, bigger, and he was also trying to create his own online stuff on the on, on, on a different side of the world. You know what I mean? And it's like we both met. Well, us, me and Javan met Dee at this variety showcase uh, where our friends Twist and Pulse were doing this, holding this um, this celebration of performances. And um, he watched us do a comedy duo set. And a big thing is as well, me and Javan had never done comedy before as well. So okay. I don't know why we did comedy. The night before, we actually scrapped what we was going to do. We was going to do a duo log, very, very serious um, and and it just wasn't working. It wasn't clicking. So we took the risk. We said, look, let's just scrap this and let's just let's just do comedy. Like we, I don't think we even said do comedy. I think we just started writing our own material, wow. and we were just writing about what we find funny. And it was about this sketch about um, you can even find it on YouTube. <laughs> but it was just um, two guys who meet up and they're talking about you know what they've been up to, and it was about Javan's character breaking it down to me that he's been seeing my girlfriend you know and it was just these many beats of back and forth of me trying to suss out like what's he talking about <laughs> but him trying to tell me what it is without telling me basically yeah yeah so wow. again like after the show a week later we sat down and you know we created this thing called man I'm on the wall and honestly man i didn't see myself in youtube i didn't see myself in comedy um didn't see myself doing the stuff i do now man. um even the, the man i am today like you know how i can speak and my character all of this stuff but it all stems from you know man i'm on the wall and i guess it's been my greatest you know a little bit surprising but greatest achievements and i think once we took it on as like okay cool this is our baby once we created it that's it you know i i you know it didn't become a surprise or a shock element i i just threw myself at comedy or threw myself at everything we've ever done to the, to this day you know Massive. so yeah that's i guess that's my sort of yeah <laughs> beautiful. beautiful i think the key thing there for the audience is stop sitting down waiting for opportunities go yes. out there and create them go out there yes. and create them you guys got tired of sitting down and waiting so you said let's do this ourselves and bang <laughs> the rest is history <laughs> like exactly man you know exactly because I mean? that's all it takes at the end of the day do you know what i mean it's like a lot of people sit on great ideas and we always say it's like there's there's always another person out there thinking the same thing as you you know and it's just up to it's, it's who who does it first you know that's it. who and executes that, it, who executes basically yeah. big big so 
we normally ask you know what steps you took to make the vision a reality but you've kind of answered really I mean <laughs> you went to the Brit school you didn't just take it as I'm at the Brit school so I'm obviously gonna get work now you decided to put in the work have a high work ethic yeah come yeah. out of the Brit school said we can go down the university route or we can go and get some real life experience you chose to get real life experience and then yeah. rather than saying let's wait for calls you got off your backside and you made it happen and yeah yeah. yeah, I mean, I, that speaks I, for itself. I, I, I would say this as a big sort of um, me and the boys did it for TED Talks um, about two years ago. We had we basically created this acronym called PEP, and PEP stands for um, preparation, execution, and perseverance. Bad. And we've identified these three things as our formula to success, basically. So, oh. you know, any kids out there, I'd say the reason why I say prepare is because, you know, in the beginning of our journey, we didn't quite prepare enough. We, you know, we set out, we, we created our, our concept of Mandem and the characters and all this kind of stuff, but we didn't think what is life after we released the first episode. Mm-hmm. Released the first, first episode and realized, okay, cool, we need to create another one and another one after that, you know, and we didn't quite, you know, if we planned, you know, a lot better, maybe we could have foreseen that future and we could have had everything filmed as a block and been able to release comfortably, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, execution so you know you can always you know execute your ideas to a, to a there's always room for improvement you know and uh perseverance is is a is a thing that you constantly find yourself in and even to this day where we are you know it's it's not always rosy it's always you know it's it's got its highs and lows but it's about perseverance at the end of the day and consistency you know it's about going through you know your trials and tribulations and you know if you do persevere you will there is always light and you will come up stronger so you know that i'd say that's a big thing and i just just something popped into my head as well like doing everything we've created you know i mean the boys have individually gone on to do you know really special things like you know javan you know doing doctor who and you know all of his roles and you know Deezer stand up and he's doing you know his thing and that side and now he's a comedic actor too doing short films left right and center and even the success I've got today and it's been a great blessing to have that but also it's been great leverage to get those opportunities because we are we've had this this baby of ours we've been able to uh, um, get into certain rooms a lot easier sometimes you know for real, so for real. it all kind of helps the fact that we just have this 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 own you know baby of ours basically that helps push us into certain opportunities beautiful you build one thing master it and then the other mm-hmm. opportunities come mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. awesome indeed indeed man we've got to go on to our rapid round where i'm literally just going to chuck a, f- a load of questions at you answer as honestly as you can the rapid round okay go uh, for it cool what time do you wake up um nine o'clock <laughs> nine o'clock <laughs> nice <laughs> What one thing do you do in the morning to guarantee a productive day? Exercise. Exercise. Okay. How long for? Depends. Uh, it could be an hour, but I do calisthenics, so it just depends on when my back gets tired. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> At the moment, I love. To, I need to work to do more cardio. That's what I need to do. But cardio, yeah. man, that's the enemy. <laughs> I hear. You, I hear. You. If you could be any animal, which one would you be and why? Ooh. Um, an eagle, because I've always wanted to fly. I've always wanted to fly. Uh, I have a love for like airplanes and anything that involves that type of stuff there. So, yeah, I'd say an eagle. Awesome. What's your favourite dessert? <sighs> favourite dessert, favourite dessert, favourite dessert. Okay, it's a little bit boring, but I'd have to say it'd be custard with like a Victoria sponge. Like, I love that. Okay. Simple, effective. I've got a sweet tooth too. So, <laughs> yeah, man, that's <laughs> nice. That's nice. Neat. Name one thing you could not go without. Oh, oh man. <laughs> one. I can't go about. Just one. <laughs> um, um, see, I want to make it a bit more fun, but I'm going to say something a bit more corny. Um, a family. Like, is it, is it a product or can I... We'll give you both. We'll give you, we'll give you both. That, okay. one was, that one was okay. the deep In one. Of... That one was the deep one for everyone. Family. <laughs> I'll say, okay, cool. On uh, one hand, I'll say family can't go without them, love them to pieces. But if it was something just out there, I'd have to say for right now, because it's such a great purpose, uh, materialistic a little bit, but my car. Okay. Say my car, just because it gets me A to B. And yeah, yes, right now is. it's perfect. Beautiful. You are at a karaoke bar. What's your go to song? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a, I'm a massive hip hop fan. It would have to be something Cuba J Cole or Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Um, but but I might take it R and B. It might be a slow jam. I don't know. Okay. If knows, yeah yeah. You know I might I might do a oh man a little uh, Joe. Yeah, it would have to be Joe. Okay. Oh yeah okay. yeah. Okay. It would have okay. to be all of that amp. Yeah. Research that Joe. All that yeah. All of that amp. Oh, he's all going there. Amp. Yeah. He's going there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Tell us something most people wouldn't know about you. Ooh. So we follow you on Twitter, following your journey. What might we not know? Although there's been loads we didn't know about you, to be honest, in this interview so far. But what's one thing that might surprise us? Okay, all right. It's it's not it's not it's a really stupid fear. It's not even a fear, man. It's just like a bad. Okay, like I can very very clear. Like I I like, hi, like my hygiene levels are quite high. Like I can't do you know what I mean dirt too much. Like I'm very sort of OCD with it, man. Like really, like honestly, anyone who knows me, like I'm. I'm very sort of like cool, you know what I mean? Okay, cool. The cushions on the floor. I've got to pick up the cushion real quick. You okay. know what I mean? It's like that, man. It's, it's you know what I mean. Sometimes in the past, I've had to use my elbow to switch off the light because <laughs> my hands were clean, isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know them once. I know them once. Heavy. <laughs> you're a clean freak. You're a clean freak. What is your most effective daily habit? Um, one so thing you do part of my routine. Day. Yeah, that you think is the most effective. Um, I'd have to say, um, listen to music. Okay. Listen to music. The reason why I say that is because um, the different vibrations or whatever's playing, it just what you're conditioning yourself to really affects who you are. You know what I mean? So yeah. I know if I wake up in the morning and I start playing, I don't know, a certain type of music, then it's going to make me feel a certain way. You know what I mean? But yeah. if it's if it's Lauren Hill, then maybe I'm more understanding today. Uh-huh, I mean, uh-huh. I'm more in touch with who I am. <laughs> real talk, real talk. Real talk. You don't want to play, you don't want to play Lauren Hill on the way to the gym. But you don't want to play, <laughs> you don't want to really play Jay-Z on the way to meet your girl. I understand. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Heavy. Uh, what's your biggest distraction? Social media, man. Uh-huh. Social media. But this is the thing, because for what we do now, and I'm sure you might ask the question later, but what we're, what we're doing moving forward wise we have to use a lot more social media so i think it's a massive distraction especially when you have to just be in your phone and you know looking at certain things and whatnot but it's just like you're just you're, you're not in tune with what's going on around you you know For real, so, it's that double-edged sword yeah yeah all, sort. all right so a time travel machine is created mm, it can only mm. take you backwards it can't bring you back <laughs> but you'll keep all the knowledge you have now you're taking back to your 18th birthday Knowing okay. what you know now, what are the first three things you would do? I'd do everything the same. Okay, change nothing. Change nothing. Do awesome. everything the same. Awesome. Do everything the same. No regrets. I don't, You're good. Yeah, no regrets. Love life and just keep moving forward. Awesome. Love it. Why, <laughs> why, why do you do what you do? Woo, I love that question. <laughs> why? I'll tell you the reason why. Why is because it's my purpose. It's my God-given purpose. I was. I feel like I was set out in this world to create content, whether it be entertainment or, or, or anything in, in that sort of circle of things, but to help change the world in terms of, I believe that entertainment and, and you know, things that you watch help uh, uh, create create what choices you make in your life and, and how you receive people. You know, I still watch EastEnders and, you know, I still remember the character of Dirty Den. Mm-hmm. Anyone in the street who would look like that type of character, I remember I'd always be sort of fearful to realise how much of an effect it has on us as, as, you know, as people. And some people don't realise that. But, you know, I aim to create, you know, great sort of content that helps stimulates people's minds and helps change their lives for the better and, I guess, help a, a whole generation now with opportunities too that's a whole new thing as well and i guess the the, the, the biggest thing as well is just i just want to be the, the best man i can be and the best father i can be to my kids or the best husband i can be to my wife so i guess beautiful. overall be the best person for this world that's that's me as a whole beautiful beautiful thank you man now for the audience members who are listening and thinking do you know what i'm a creative i would love to be able to mm-hmm. write be able to act and do that as a living and just really live a life of passion like that what three mm-hmm. things, what three little habits or three actions should they do right now? Should they take right now? Right now, think about who you have in your circle. Who, the biggest thing is your environment. 
yeah, it's that thing of as a creative, can I can I say this idea to your to to friends or family that will be received well? Do you know what I mean? And sometimes not even just received well. Can it can it be fed with great sort of criticism as well? Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you find that you know people might be saying things that they don't have the the experience to be saying it. You know, they don't have the 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 right sort of uh, knowledge of that particular thing, so they'll give you the wrong advice due to that. So yeah. I'd say the biggest thing is look at who is around you. Are they positive too? Are they good people around you? Optimistic? You know what I mean? How do they make you feel every day? You know, like even in my friendship group, like we've started to, you know, we everyone's got the whole banter stuff, but we really, like we look at everything in our friendship. Our friend, my friendship is is almost like it's teaching me. Okay, cool. Like I'm setting myself for how even marriage would be like because. It's understanding relationships, understand people, and it's like you know we look at things like cool, you know, when you're when you're having like a joke with someone, like okay, like you as humans we do things which are so subconscious that we don't even realize, but you know in your friendship group you could be doing throwing insults at each other, and you don't realize that could be tearing you lot down apart slowly, talk, slowly, but you know you you treat it as a joke, and and we get a lot away. You know, we treat everything as a joke, and it, it allows us to have our, our get away out of jail card type of thing, but. You know, you just got to like look at everything in your life and really break it down. But yeah, I think your environment is the first thing I would do. Um, The next thing I'd do is is it's just about your ideas, like talk, thinking about like you know writing things down on paper is such a powerful thing. You know, I mean, just put it down on paper and just and just map it out. You know, and just see you know how it reads or how it sounds or whatever it is. But it's about just. You know, you wake up in the morning, just write down what your dream was or just write the first thing that comes into your head and you'll find that you just teach yourself to become, I don't know, train your ideas and train yourself to action those ideas too, you know? So I find that to be very, very powerful. Um, The last thing I'd say is, um, what is the last thing I'll get you to do? Um, Last thing I'd do is... um, I'd, 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 I think being a master of your craft is a massive thing. So I'll get you to maybe just carry on studying, studying the people who've done it ahead of you before awesome. you. So uh, I believe that success leaves clues. So it's all about just mastering your craft and understanding, you know, that person's journey and why they did this and why they did that. Because the more you understand their journey, you'll understand yours is because it's quite similar. And, you know, you kind of save yourself a lot of questions in the long run because you, you understood you know, if it's a, if you find yourself in a in a, tri- a tribulation, a problem, you think, oh, back to the time when Oprah Winfrey was told that she couldn't have a, her her anchor, she couldn't be a TV anchor because of this reason, and you know, you can also persevere because you know that that legend, you know, got over it too. For real. So, powerful, th- powerful. Yeah, those are the kind of three things that I'll get someone to do. Awesome. Now, before we let you go, our final question is: You're stood on a stage in front of ten thousand young people, but you're only mm-hmm. allowed to give one piece of advice before men in black suits come and take you away one piece of <laughs> advice one line what's that one line for for the young people in front of you okay that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> um i would say this i'd say one line i'll say nobody lives forever but the aim is to create something that will bang. and you will bang bang powerful powerful and i believe in that so much you know you get the day you were born the date you die and a little dash between what happened in that dash what does that dash stand for exactly Big. exactly because it's that thing of when you if you imagine yourself imagine your funeral imagine all the people that come to your funeral and what imagine what the things that they will say about you for that me. will give you a great indication of of how you're impacting this world you know what i mean your family friends and everyone else around you powerful powerful Thank you, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute honor to have you on the show. No worries, I have man. enjoyed thank it. You, man. I've learned a lot. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know about you. So, and even me, even me, I have to, honestly I have to say thank you because the more times you ask these questions, you don't realize yourself, you know, even how much in tune you are, you know, with everything. You don't realize how much new stuff you know. You know? Yeah. So, again, man, thank you for being for here as well. And I, I guess thank you for having this opportunity for these listeners to hey, listen pleasure. to someone like myself. Hopefully it helps, you know. Absolute so. pleasure. And it's beautiful to see you in this light away from the comedy as well and realise, yo, there's depth here as well. It's not just, <laughs> it's not just a little joke on the wall. There's, there's depth yeah. behind the story. That's beautiful. Yeah, and man. before we let you go, how can our listeners get in contact with you? Wicked. Well, 
you can contact, well, you get in contact with me via Twitter. So at Purcell Ascot, P E R C E W L E, Ascot with two T's. Um, or you can get through to me or us as the wall of comedy. And that's something completely new that we're launching. It's launched already, but we're, we're sort of bringing a whole new. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot of us in 2016, but that is basically setting up the SPTV of comedy. Oh, Um, nice. So we've realized the gap in the market. So get ready for new content, not just man and focus, but for everything. You know, we're going to be basically producing anything that TV doesn't want to produce anymore. So that's, that's our next step. But yeah, get in contact with us at the wall of comedy. Check us out on Facebook, the wall of comedy, and just yeah, Google us, man, and you know you you'll find us. But, hey, yeah. twenty sixteen sounds like it's gonna be a big year. Uh, yeah, man, we're big getting year. ready, man. Beautiful. Very big. Thank, Thank you, you so much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You can surround yourself with eagles or chickens, and you spend time with a true eagle, Purcell <laughs> Ascot, you, and Kamal Hyman. Guys, continue to aim a little higher. We'll see you next time, Percy. Thanks again. Cheers, bro. Thank you, man. Peace. Thank you so much for listening. You could have been anywhere in the world doing absolutely anything, listening to any show, but you chose to listen to the Aim A Little Higher podcast, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please be sure to like, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And if you haven't already, get over to www.aimalittlehigher.com, fill in your details into the form, and receive your free video on how to find your passion. To be in for the chance of winning a free Aim a Little Higher shirt, get over to aimlittlehigher.com, fill out the form, and then submit your question for the Saturday Q&A. The winning questions will be answered in their very own podcast on Saturday, and you will also receive a free shirt sent directly to you.